right now because he tested positive for COVID. And so we're just praying for his swift recovery and hopefully he'll still be able to join in and be a part of camp later in the week. And save the date for Vacation Bible School, VBS here at St. Andrews will be July 18th through the 22nd from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Children ages four uh, through entering grade six are invited. The LRCC, Lutheran Retreats, Camps, and Council. Conferences. Conferences, thank you. Uh, camp staff will be here to lead songs, games, Bible stories, and crafts each day. I, myself, am a, a big fan of uh, volunteering in music and games, so that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, the cost is $20 per child, uh, with family discounts for two or more children. Enrollment forms uh, can be found in the church office, on the church website, and in the courtyard this weekend following the service. Thank you, Nick. And we are still looking for volunteers for Vacation Bible School, either middle school or high school youth or adults. Um, just let us know and we can get you our volunteer forms to fill out. And we will be having uh, an orientation and volunteer training next weekend. So we'll be communicating that with all of our volunteers. Um, also, it's not in our announcement pages, but we do want to remind you all that Teenagers is meeting this week on Thursday at 1130 at Harry Griffin Park. Um, for the annual summer picnic, so bring your own chair, bring your own lunch, spend some time um, together at Harry Griffin this Thursday at 11.30. Again, um, people 55 and up are always invited to be a part of teenagers, but if you just want to go, you can go. You, there's, no, there's no checking of IDs at the door, if you will. So you can join in and be a part of that fellowship time this Thursday. Again, want to remind you to fill out the connection cards for those of you who are worshiping online with us. Good morning to everyone online with us. Um, there'll be a, an online version of this you can fill out um, in the chat on the back or boxes you can check, as well as room for prayer requests, and we'll be collecting these later in the offering place. Great, so those are all of our announcements. We'll continue now with our call to worship from our musicians. Thank you. 
confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the sorrows of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we are dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Our opening song is Glory and Praise for God. The words and music are available in our bulletin. For those of you at home, um, the words will pop up on the screen for you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul had written that he was sending him something in the mail, which 
To which the child replied by saying, you're my favorite superhero. And then Paul Rudd wrote back and said, well, you are mine. Isn't that sweet? And as I was reading through the story of the Good Samaritan for worship this weekend, that story came to mind for me. Here's this lonely kid that had been outcast and ostracized at his school. Someone who felt tossed aside and ignored. And then a complete stranger appears to show him a little bit of kindness and support. And for a famous actor like Paul Rudd, something like this was probably not that big of a deal. But for a lonely kid, this interaction might make a lifetime of difference. The story of the Good Samaritan, as we call it, is certainly familiar, but it nevertheless continues to have important meaning and impact for us, even 2,000 years after the time that Jesus told it for the first time. And now we know Jesus knows how to tell a good story, doesn't he? The kind of story that makes people stop and think and evaluate. And he comes up with this story in response to something as simple as the question that he has asked. And who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Continues to be a central question for us as followers of Jesus. Who are we called to treat as neighbors? Who is in need of help and accompaniment? Who are our neighbors? And who are the ones who are neighbors? to us. When asked this question, Jesus didn't lecture the lawyer about neighborliness. Instead, he told him a story. It's a story that also answered the lawyer's initial question of, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The story Jesus told is about putting words into action. While the lawyer wondered about attaining the reward, Jesus talked about eternal life now. In essence, Jesus told the lawyer that we experience eternal life here and now in the doing. Now I believe there are two challenges for us as modern day hearers of this story that was first recorded by the author of the Gospel of Luke. First and foremost, for the hearers of this parable in Jesus' day, no Samaritan would ever be called good. I know this is something we've talked about a little bit as stories about Samaritans have come up in our worship um, over the summer. Samaritans were viewed with suspicion and as outsiders, not people to be trusted. So for us, every Samaritan is a good Samaritan, right? But it wasn't that way uh, for the people who heard this story back in Jesus' time. We expect this compassionate response to the man beaten and lying on the side of the road. But what Jesus said originally would have been scandalous. Secondly, we see this situation often too narrowly, just being about one single person's compassion. All we see are the victim, the perpetrator, and the rescuer as the players in this story. But we forget about the bystanders, who are just ordinary folks going about their business. There's a wonderful folk tale from Burma who captured, that captures for me the essence of what I believe Jesus was saying to all the people listening when he told this parable. It's a similar kind of a story, but different in that it reminds us that there is no such thing as an innocent bystander. So here's the story from the country of Burma, the folk tale. Long ago, a traveler was walking through the jungles of Burma when he came upon a small village. As the sun was going down, he decided to just sleep along the roadside and enter the village in the morning. Taking his coin purse from around his neck, he found a stone nearby and hid his purse under the stone so no one would take it as he slept. As it turned out, a villager had spotted him hiding the purse and late at night, as the traveler slept, the villager returned and stole the purse. When the traveler awoke, the money was gone. The traveler sat down beside the road and began to weep. A crowd began to gather, curious about this traveler weeping on the edge of their village. Before long, the mayor joined the crowd and inquired about the situation. He listened to the traveler and then asked to see the stone. 
the traveler walked a short distance to a round stone about the size of a man's head. The mayor ordered, arrest that stone and bring that thief to the town square where all convene a court. The villagers followed the mayor and the traveler to the town square, and once the village elders were in place, the mayor convened the court. The mayor asked the stone, what is your name? The stone was silent. The mayor leaned forward closer to the stone and demanded, where did you come from? More silence. Well, at least tell me your age. By this time, some of the villagers were casting glances at each other. Small smiles and puzzled looks were on the faces of the villagers. The mayor pushed his face closer to the stone. So you don't want to speak up? Tell me, why were you loitering outside our village? The villagers began to cover their mouths to muffle their laughter. Were you looking for trouble? He asked the stone. Some of the villagers could not contain themselves any longer and they let out a laugh. The mayor turned to the crowd and declared, show some respect, this is a court of law. The mayor turned back to the stone. You will not answer any of my questions, so I hold you in contempt of court. In punishment, you will receive 30 lashes with a stick. The crowd could no longer contain themselves. They let out uproarious laughter. The mayor then turned to the crowd and said, you have no respect for this court, so I find every one of you a coin apiece. One by one, the villagers came forward and dropped a coin in the bowl in front of the mayor. The mayor then gave the coins to the traveler and apologized for the crime that had been committed outside of his village. The traveler's eyes filled with tears, for what he had lost had now been restored. The mayor wished the traveler well and ordered the stone to be returned to the place where it was found. People talked about this trial for some time. Some thought the mayor acted foolishly, but most admitted that the mayor acted with great wisdom. Every time the villagers walked past the stone, they were reminded that they share the burdens of one another and all who pass by their way. This story and the parable remind us there are no bystanders in this life. We all know the right thing to do. We know deep in our hearts that we are all connected to one another as neighbors. Jesus asked the lawyer, after reciting the parable about the Samaritan, which one of these acted like a neighbor? The lawyer replied, the one who showed mercy. And what did Jesus say? Go and do likewise. The story and the parable show us how being a neighbor works. And even though the story may have ended, it's not over. Because when Jesus says go and do likewise, the rest of the story is up to us. As we go and do likewise too, we remember that we do so carrying with us the story of what Jesus first has done for us. He who gave of himself on the cross asking nothing in return. For the times in our lives when we too have felt abandoned, hurt, and alone. We have a Savior who joins us in whatever we are facing, who loves us and serves us, with compassion and grace. Let us pray. Eternal God, breathe on your church anew the gift of your spirit, that in serving you, we may respond to the needs of our neighbors with a compassion that embodies your love for each of us. Strengthen us in our service so we may honor Jesus' call to go and serve in his most holy name. Amen.
prayers. We do have several prayer requests. Um, we're praying for healing for Teresa Schnell, Carolyn Schnell's goddaughter. Also healing for Marty Schmidt. Um, Marty suffered a heart attack this last week and was hospitalized, um, but she had a stint put in and is feeling much better. And if she isn't home already, she'll be home very soon. Um, also praying for Diana Osborne's friend Joanne's brother who's on life support. Um, so prayers for peace and comfort for him and also for their family as they make those difficult um, end-of-life care decisions on his behalf. Today we'll be doing something slightly different. Instead of uh, responding after your own prayer, we will respond after God of grace, your own prayer. The United States of Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we may bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace. Here. Here. Turn this community towards neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. We pray for our outreach ministries, recovery groups, God of grace. We thank you for the children in our midst. We pray for our confirmation students heading to camp and for our preschool as we welcome our new director, Valerie Macias. God of grace. Come near all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty. <clears throat> Hope where all is despair. Love in the face of neglect. Comfort where there is death and healing and illness. We offer now the silent prayers of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of peace. Peace to everyone worshiping online with us as well. Peace be with you. And now as we continue with the receiving of the offering, um, we also have information, we'll pass the offering plate around, we also have information in our announcement pages about online giving, if you prefer to give that way, um, there's, a, there's a way that you can access our Venmo account or our website for online giving as well. For those of you online, we'll be posting a link to our website in the chat. Um, also, and um, this is also that time you can turn in those blue connection cards and let us know you're worshiping with us and how we can be praying for you. Together we'll sing our offering song, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Um, it's on page four, the words and music and your bulletins. And again, for those of you online, um, the words will be available on your screens. Be free. 
Or another person would be like kind of like a, a leader, like a politician walked by and said, I don't have time for that. And so the person who ended up helping him was someone who a lot of people would normally look at and say, that person doesn't know right from wrong. They don't know what's right. And it was that person that came to him, came and helped the man get better in Jesus' story. Now, the thing that's important to remember is that this is a story Jesus told. It didn't really happen. But at the same time, we can learn a lot from stories like that, right? Yeah. And so in the story, the big question is always then, who is my neighbor? Who acted like a neighbor? Do you think Jesus was talking about just the neighbors who live next door to you? Definitely not. What do you think he meant when he was talking about being neighbors to people? Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And in just a moment, we're going to invite you all to come forward. 
for communion um, as the ushers guide you forward. What we do in this space is we make kind of like a horseshoe shape so you can come and go come right up towards the stairs here on this side, you know, go up the stairs, just stay on this lowest level. And then for those of you coming up this side, kind of come around this way, we'll make a circle. Um, around our altar, we'll come around and serve you a piece of bread, individual cup of wine or grape juice. Um, the wine is the lighter color liquid, the grape juice is the darker color liquid. We also have gluten-free crackers available, so if you need that, please let me know and we can serve that to you. Um, after you've done, um, receive the elements and consume them, um, we'll collect your empty cups and then you're welcome to take hands with your neighbors so that we can offer you a blessing. And then you can return your seats down the side aisles. Again, if you don't want to take hands, you don't have to do that part either. Um, and if you prefer not to come forward, you can also stay in your seat and we'll bring communion to you um, after we've done communing the circles. Um, and it is our practice to serve communion by first name. So if you don't have your name taken on, you may be asking you for that um, as you come forward. I think that's everything you need to know. Hopefully, we'll, we'll figure it out together. Um, the table's been prepared and all are welcome.
we give you thanks, generous God. For in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and the earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through all of our lives, all may know Jesus' name. Now may the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Our closing song is Go Ye Therefore. Um, the words of music are on page six. Again, for those of you online, the words will be available for you on your screens. <laughs>